We looked at geom text and geom label. Now let's take a larger case study of where we might apply these kinds of annotations. So here we are going to use the same economics data frame. So economics and we are plotting on the x-axis date and y-axis the unemployed. Okay, number of uh, people unemployed and uh, geom line. Okay, so we get this. This is the unemployment level and uh, what we want to do is to try to plot some additional information on top of this plot to try to communicate something right after all what we are trying to do most of the time when we uh, when we present data is we try to present some hypothesis or try to bring out some relationship that that we might think exists in the data right so, so we essentially what we are doing is following uh, the precept that we laid out up front that we want to provide context to data right so here we see the unemployment level going up and down up and down okay but we want to provide some context to see what happened there okay again this is just exploratory data analysis this doesn't confirm anything but it can generate some hypotheses okay so what we might try to do is to annotate this with the president who was in power during those particular years and also the political affiliation the party of that person okay this is just an interesting sort of analysis now in order to do that of course this data the economics data frame itself does not contain information about the political party and the president right so we'll have to bring that information in from another data frame which exists within ggplot right and then we'll have to combine within one plot information from two different data frames quite often we have to do these kinds of things to uh, to communicate interesting insights right so what we are trying to do is the following this is what we are going to end up plotting right so we are starting from nixon and we are plotting the you know starting and ending times for each president we are putting the name of the president within the appropriate thing and then we are also showing by color which party the president belonged to okay so of course you've got uh, nixon and ford republicans carter was uh, democrat reagan bush republicans clinton democrat bush and then obama okay so clinton bush obama all of them got 8 years so did reagan but none of the none of the others got 8 years they all got 4 years okay so that's that's really what we are trying to show in this plot okay so let's see how we arrive at this plot so we've got date on the x-axis unemployment on the y-axis and uh, the party affiliation and the president name right so the party affiliation president name is coming from one data frame and the basic time series is coming from a different data frame so there's quite a lot of things to be done here to get this plot the whole code looks like this okay I don't want you to get completely daunted by this code what I'm going to do is to take this code uh, segment my segment and we'll dissect it that's the idea okay so basically what you can see here is we are saying ggplotic presidential equals now for the moment just take this as given d plier colon colon filter presidential start greater than economics dollar date one okay that is this is just a subset function so just think of d plier colon colon filter as just subset that you, that you've been using quite a lot now later in our course we'll start using uh, filter d plier functions quite a lot okay but think of it as subset so basically what we are saying is take the presidential data frame which is there already in ggplot and keep only rows which have a start date that is greater than economics dollar date of one okay that is the minimum date in economics that's all we want to start because the presidential data frame has information about precedents going way back but we are interested only in uh, the range that is covered by the economics data frame okay uh, and we already know that the economics data frame covers uh, starting from uh, a little before 70 okay so that's all we are interested in okay so that's what we are doing and you can see broadly speaking what is happening is we are saying ggplot economics and then first the geom rect what geom rect is doing is basically plotting uh, all of these 
colored rectangles. Okay, the red color and the blue colored rectangles, that's what the rect geom rect is doing. Okay, geom V line is basically putting the lines at the different precedential uh, breaks, right? So when one precedence term ends, you're putting a line vertical line out there. That's what we are doing there. And geom text is putting the precedence names. Geom line is plotting the basic time series. And this geom fill scale fill manual, okay? This is controlling the actual colors. Now remember from our discussion of controlling axis and so on, that if you don't say anything, then ggplot is going to choose its own colors. But if you want your own colors, you can do that, okay? Although we did not explicitly discuss scale fill manual, that's what it's doing, okay? We'll come to that when we reach that piece of the code, okay? Broadly, that's what's going on. So first, put the rectangles, then put the vertical lines, then put the precedence names, then put the basic time series. That's it. And then make sure that the colors are blue and red and not some random thing that ggplot is going to choose. This is all is going on. Now, let's take a look at it uh, part by part, okay? The first part, of course, is we are filtering out for the president. Uh, we, the start date of the president should be greater than the uh, initial date of the economics. Okay, so that's what is going on. And that is why it started with Nixon. Because the prior president before Nixon was Johnson. And Johnson's start was before the economics data frame begins. So Johnson got left out. It started with Nixon. Okay, so ggplot economics plus geom rect. Okay, and when you do a geom rect, which is a rectangle, this is again a new geom. We have not seen it before you have to specify the x min, x max, that's what you have to do for a rect, and then the fill for the rectangle, okay? And what we are doing is, uh, uh, for the rectangle, we are putting the, after all, the y min and y max, we want it to go all the way from top to bottom, right? We are interested only in the lines that are going. Now, the reason we used a rectangle and not just geom V line is because we want to fill the rectangle with a color. If we had just used the lines, we wouldn't have been able to fill with color. That's why we are using a rectangle. But we are also saying we want the line, the rectangle, to go all the way to the top and all the way to the bottom. So we are just using infinity. Y min is minus infinity. Y max is infinity, right? So let the rectangles dimensions on the vertical side, let it cover the entire graph. Okay, that's that's the idea here. But the x and uh, x min and x max, they basically go from the start of a particular president's term to the end of the term. And of course, we are saying uh, alpha is 0.2, which is the transparency, data equals presidential. Okay, so although we have specified that the data for the whole plot is going to be economics, for geom rect, we are overriding that and saying use the precedential data frame. Okay, so what this is going to do is it's going to take uh, uh, for every precedent, it's going to take, it's just plotting the rectangles at this point. Okay, so it is taking the starting and ending for each precedent and it's creating the rectangles within the plot. And the rectangles, the uh, of course, the, the on the vertical dimension, all these rectangles are going all the way from top to bottom. On the horizontal dimension, as you can see here, basically, let me go back to the plot here. Okay, so on the vertical dimension, you see the rectangle is going all the way to the top, all the way to the bottom. That is why we said y min is minus infinity, y max is plus infinity. But of course, it's not going to go all the way to infinity because the, the uh, dimensions of the plot are controlled by something else. Okay, but uh, Nixon started, let's say, in 1967 and went out somewhere in 73 or so, maybe a little before that. Okay, so that's what this is showing. So uh, the rectangle for Nixon is going from here to here. The rectangle for Ford is starting here, ending here. For Carter, starting here, ending here. So for every precedent, the start and end is used to create the rectangle. So that's really what happened with the rectangle. Okay, and color for the rectangle was determined by party, fill equals party, okay? And within the presidential data frame for every president, you also have the party affiliation of the president, okay? So fill equals party, okay? So, so that's really 
what happened in this particular layer. Okay, so now let's move on to the next layer. Okay, so this plotted the red and the blue rectangles. That's what this part of the code did. Okay, once again, I think you will not grasp the code just by listening to me. You'll grasp it only by looking at it yourself and boldly going in there, making small changes here and there and seeing how it affects the plot. Okay, you, you shouldn't be worried about going in and changing code that I give you because you can always load the same code back again. There's no problem. So you can experiment all you like with the code and I strongly encourage you to go and experiment quite a lot. Okay, just try to do minor things. So for example, the text of the pres president name is here. Why not try and put the president name up there? You know, just something for you to try with the code or try to change the colors. Okay, or change the col uh, you know line color. Uh, there are so many things you could do with, with all of these things. Okay, so that's the idea here. Just play around with the code. Okay, so now let's take a look at the next layer. We are looking at the V line. Okay, so we are saying X intercept is as dot numeric start. Okay, that is start is a date. So we are converting it to a number and it's a vertical line. So we are just putting the vertical lines there. Okay, and data equals precedential. Color equals gray 50. So what this does is it gives you these vertical lines. Okay, otherwise the vertical lines would not have been in gray. The vertical lines would have been whatever the rectangles were, but we want to keep the lines under our control. That's what we are doing here. Next is geom text, x equals start, right? So we want to put the name of the president, which is label equals name, right? So the label of the text is going to be the name of the president. We want to put it at the start level, meaning start at the year where the president started and why we are just fixing it at 2500. Okay, so that's looking at the scale, you will see that, right, so you see here, this is roughly 2500 here, and that's where we are putting it, okay. So start of the president's term will be there, and at 2500, all the president names will occur. So we looked at the graph, figured out where it's supposed to be, and put in the 2500. And then size equals 3, that is just controlling the font size and vertical justification, horizontal justification, nudge x equals 50. We're pushing it a little bit to the right. We don't want it to just be sitting on the line. We're pushing it a little bit forward by 50. Okay, and that 50 is of course based on the x-axis dimensions. Okay, so it's 50 years is what you're pushing it by. Oh, sorry, not, not 50 years. It's, it's some pixel kind of shifting, I'm sorry. it's probably millimeters or some some small unit I have to check what the unit is okay so that's what got all these president names in this particular place okay and then of course this is our good old uh, time series line we've looked at it a lot and then we are saying scale fill manual values blue red right so when you say scale fill what you're saying is for the fill aesthetic, okay, for the fill aesthetic, choose the colors that I'm giving you specifically because I'm saying scale fill manual, right? If you didn't say this, then it would automatically choose two different colors, but we want the specific colors blue and red uh, to because of the party representations, we know that, right? So I'm saying I am going to manually determine the colors for the fill aesthetic. So that is why the function name is called scale fill manual okay if we are controlling line colors we might have said scale color manual okay scale or scale line type I don't know if you can do man uh, line type manuals but th that's so the fill here is the name of the aesthetic scale basically says how it's supposed to make the choice and manual says I'm going to choose it manually or there are other things which you have looked at when we uh, no I'll be talking about these later there are we can exercise much more uh, fine control over colors. We look at it at a later lecture. Okay, so that's what got the entire thing. Only problem was that, notice the y-axis, it's saying 2500. In fact, it's been doing that for quite a few of the previous plots. See, y-axis has become 2500. That's not what we want on the y-axis, right? Now, the reason it became 2500 
is because of our sequencing of the code, right? So if you look at the code here, uh, okay. Uh, so in the earlier code, I'm going to jump back to an earlier version of the code. Okay, so if you look at the code here, geom text comes first. And there we said x is start y equals 2500, right? So here, because this is the first geom that has x and y axis, these are all geoms that don't have any x and y axis. So text is the one that has x and y axis, and we said y equals 2500, okay? So it went and put 2500 as the y axis label, okay? That is because the geom text came here. Now there are two ways uh, in which we can control this scenario. One is if you go and put the line aesthetic before the text aesthetic, then the line aesthetic will take control of the access label and you will get an employee there. Okay, and that's the solution I have suggested later here. I'll just jump forward to that slide. Okay, so if you look here, I moved geom line above geom text. So now geom line takes control of the y axis label, and you'll see the y axis label showing up as an employee. Another possibility would be to simply set the label manually. Okay, so that is this is an understandable problem, right? Because you're plotting multiple geoms, and each geom may have a different y axis, right? Different thing going on with the y axis, and therefore they could be conflicting and you'll have to resolve the conflict somehow. Here we managed to resolve it by just putting geom line before geom text.